Good evening, I'm Mahesh Johnny in Colombo. This is a special report on Sri Lanka's current economic crisis. All throughout this week, we have been bringing you viewpoints of many quarters to give you a better understanding of where we are and where we need to go. Today, Finance Minister Basil Rajbaksa returned from India after signing the $1 billion uh, aid package given to us by India itself, showcasing their help to this nation. In other instances, uh, Sri Lanka always opted to go uh, to China and that seems to be missing this time around, despite many in the government saying that they are talking to the Chinese government in order to get their support as well. Well, in order to get a different view tonight, uh, I'm joined uh, by the former Minister of Energy, uh, Uday Gammanpilla. Good to see you, uh, sir. Um, this time around, uh, you're joining me as a former minister. What happened? Uh, uh, apparently, every, it was so bad that you could not uh, sort out the issues uh, within the government uh, and the only step was to, you know, break away? Well, um, we didn't leave the government. That's a wrong interpretation of the issue. We were expelled by the president because we have been telling the bitter truth to the cabinet as a whole in general and to the Minister of Finance in particular. What are the causes of the crisis? Firstly, around a year ago, we warned him. We are heading towards a huge financial crisis, a huge uh, foreign currency scarcity. So we compel, we force him to take certain steps to manage the crisis. This, is, this was a manageable crisis. I would say this is a man-made crisis. This is a deliberately created crisis. Why do I say so? It was obvious by early to mid-2020 that we are heading towards a balance of payment challenge. Because there is a huge gap between foreign currency inflow and outflow. Because every single year, the loan repayment mm. have been increasing. Secondly, there was a huge drop in uh, expatriate uh, workers' remittance, as well as tourism, of course, almost nil. So in this backdrop, it was obvious that we are heading towards a foreign currency crisis. If we can't immediately generate foreign currency inflows, mm. then what should we do? We should take steps to minimize foreign currency outflow. There are two ways of doing this. Firstly, we should meet our creditors with a recovery plan and we should uh, request them to reschedule the loan repayment. We did not do that. Secondly, we should have restricted non-essential imports. Central Bank had identified 600 such items. As early as 20th October 2020, the Central Bank proposed the Cabinet of Ministers to restrict non-essential imports. Cabinet gave its nod, but unfortunately, Minister of Finance did not implement this uh, policy adopted by the Cabinet. Because of these two policy failures, since Finance Ministry failed to t take action on time, we are experiencing this crisis now. It's very sad to note, even right now, thousands of people are in queues for hours, in certain cases days, to get their LP gas, kerosene oil, diesel, petrol, so on and so forth. Medicine, parents are dying without having medicine on but, time. But what the government is saying is that this, they did not manage, but this is nothing to, uh, I mean, this is part of the dollar crisis for, for sure, but apparently they can rectify this because there was a supply uh, uh, disruption, mainly because the dollar went up and they had to flow the, the rupee, and that cascaded into a lot of price structural issues. Um, so when prices started going up, uh, services wanted more being paid because they can't make a loss. So we had this cascading effect and what the government is saying up until the, um, such time that this would, 
you know, come to a, a calming situation, we might see this for about two, three weeks. Um, is, that, is that what your point of view? Or no, not at all. What you are saying is something different to what I was trying to explain. Now, I do admit, when they decide to float the rupee, it rocketed up to 275 level. So there's a sudden increase of all imported commodities and there is a, there's a huge impact on inflation. Even government should accept the responsibility for this. They artificially withheld the upward movement of the rupee uh, without a proper reason. That's why they, they have been holding this for a long period of time, wasting our limited foreign reserves. And once they realize that they can't hold this anymore, they decide to give it up and to uh, move it liberally. But by then, they had done the damage to our economy. It is irreparable damage, irreversible damage. Then secondly, I'm not talking about the high inflation experienced by the people at this moment. But there are no certain there are no certain commodities in the market, even at a highest possible price. Now see, people's complaint is that we want uh, milk powder, we want wheat flour, petroleum products, including LP gas, but they can't purchase those commodities even at a, any price. What I find it difficult to understand, Minister, uh, for Minister, is the fact that you were part of this government. You were sitting in those cabinet meetings. That's the, right. uh, the, 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 the day that you just mentioned, saying that the central bank proposed, uh, uh, you were in that cabinet uh, uh, and taking decisions. Now, what were you doing? So that's what so I, I tried to explain uh, at the inception. Let me explain. Give me some time. I have been warned in the government about this uh, crisis, forthcoming crisis, as early as February 2021. I have submitted 11 cabinet papers, mainly about the forthcoming energy crisis. Unfortunately, finance minister was not ready to admit that there is a crisis. You know, on 18th July 2021, there was a dinner, uh, there was a group meeting organized at uh, Presidential Palace, followed by a dinner. Uh, just before my, uh, the, the no confidence motion against me. So uh, they gave me an opportunity for me to explain what was the reason we had to increase the fuel prices. Then I explained that we are heading towards a huge financial crisis. Soon after my speech, Minister of Finance, newly appointed Minister of Finance, uh, Basil Rajapaksa, told the parliamentary group that there is no such financial crisis. Minister Gammampili is seeing crocodiles in the teacup, right? There is a there is a sh uh, shortage in uh, foreign currencies at the moment because of a manipulation done by several bank officers. I am going to solve this within two weeks. Everybody was very happy. They cheered up, finished it off. So firstly, they were not ready to admit the fact that we are heading towards a financial crisis. Unless you are not willing to admit that bitter truth, you are not willing to discuss about solution. If there is no problem, why should we discuss about solution? So I have been fighting the finance minister. Other ministers may agree for more than one year. So time, so he was very violent, very rudely attacked me. I would say he barked at me when I, whenever I tried to explain this crisis. Time to time, there were news items as well as uh, gossips in gossip columns. Then there, there were heated uh, arguments between the, between the finance minister and me. So we, I tried to tell the ca uh, cabinet, not only in writing, but orally as well. Since finance minister was not allowing us to discuss this issue, and he was not willing to admit the fact that we are in a crisis, then only I decided to 
tell this bitter truth to the general public. So, as you Why know... Why didn't you go to the president? So Why didn't you go to the president? These meetings, you know, when you say the cabinet, cabinet is a meeting chaired by the president. So the president did not listen to He, he was fully aware. He was silent. When, when uh, no, in fact, when we, when we question the actions and inactions of the finance minister, he you, uh, frequently starts barking at me. Then uh, it turns to heated arguments. Then time to time, president, prime minister intervene to stop us. The, at the last meeting on 28th January 2022, Minister Bandula Gunavardhana intervened to uh, calm both of us down because, uh, I, you know, you have seen me, I'm a cool guy. I never get uh, agitated at insults or allegations. But uh, finance minister is not ready to patiently listen to any criticism about the conduct of the economy. What did what is he saying? Because apparently, if he's saying that you know there is no crisis or he can uh, handle the crisis, then he must be telling you the solutions as well that he is thinking that he can do. What exactly is that? That's what we wanted. I said, we may be wrong, but what is what is your solution? But to date, you know, central bank submitted a uh, six month six month program to yeah, program for bank. economic recovery on 1st of October 2021, that was not, so far the Minister of Finance failed to submit this report to the cabinet and get the cabinet note. Okay, if he thinks Minister of Finance, may, he may be of the view that this is not good for the country. Mm -hmm. If it is so, he should submit an alternative way of doing it. What was his problem? He is not willing to admit the fact that we are in a crisis. So, now you are asking me what is the alternative solution submitted by the uh, finance minister. If finance minister is not in agreement with the solutions prescribed by me, pro proposed by me, then of course he should come with an alternative. But he was not ready to admit the fact that we are in a crisis. Then why should he, why should he suggest solution for a perceived crisis? That was the issue. This, the recent unrest, the recent fuel issue uh, cascaded uh, when we could not get enough stocks into the country or we could not pay enough dollars uh, to the ships, the shipments that came into the country and it was just back near uh, Colombo, uh, near Sabagaskanda waiting to, to uh, unload the uh, fuel. But when uh, Journalists asked this question from uh, certain ministers in the government, the cabinet spokesperson, uh, so on and so forth. Apparently what they said was you did not do your job, but you did everybody else's job because you did not uh, look into the energy factor and you did not order the, new, new, uh, the required amount of fuel in order to keep us safe. Because of that is the reason all these cascading events occurred. Uh, one thing that uh, uh, I think um, Minister, um, uh, I think Rohit Abegunamardana said that, uh, you know, you put a paper saying that there's going to be three billion dollars worth of uh, uh, fuel coming from Oman uh, and everybody was happy with it and, you know, but nothing came, nothing happened. What's, what's this whole allegation about you not doing your job, but apparently doing everybody else's job? That was not true at all. It shows his failure to grasp what was going on at, at the cabinet. Unfortunately, ministers should be competent enough to understand what's happening at the cabinet. But he was totally wrong. Firstly, I said I have submitted 11 cabinet papers. In fact, I, I used to take those documents with me whenever I participated in uh, TV debates, YouTube interviews. Unfortunately, I, ha I haven't brought those here because now it's two it's weeks old, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, so uh, what happened was we have ordered. Now, see, you yourself said that you have seen news items. There are uh, ships of petroleum products near our territorial water, they, without entering into our territorial water, since we have failed to make the payment as agreed, or we have failed to open LCs as agreed. Now see, if I failed in my duty 
There can't be ships awaiting payments. It, I have scheduled the ships uh, according to our requirement, well in, well in advance. Unfortunately, usually, as you know, we have to make the payment or we have to open LCs before loading the product to the ships. Mm -hmm. But we were, since our banking system, Minister of Finance, failed to provide uh, dollars or assurances required by the commercial banks to open LCs on time, we still were able to convince the supplier to load to the ship and bring up to our territorial water. So I have done my duty, not only I was able to, very extraordinarily, I was able to convince the suppliers to bring the product up to Sri Lanka without having any proper order being placed. But the, considering Sri Lanka's situation, you know, in certain cases, those days we, we enjoyed six months credit. We opened LCs to be settled in six months. Once those LCs got matured, our banks failed to honor those. Then they said, the suppliers inform us, look, we can't open LCs for six months. We will open LCs for one month or three months. Again, our situation got bad to worse. Our credit rating began to uh, come down. Then they informed, no, we need prepayment. We load the product to ship only after making the payment. Even, even such a scenario, we have brought the ships up to the territorial water without making the payments in dollars. As you know, we sell petrol, diesel and petroleum products uh, in rupees. We collect rupees. Then, if our banking system, finance ministry, has no capacity to convert those rupees to dollars, how can we make the payments? Making foreign currency available for purchasing is not my responsibility. It is the responsibility of the Ministry of Finance. So, I have performed my duty, unfortunately. Now, you name a minister, it only reflects the fact that he un doesn't understand what's going on in the country. Unfortunately, he is still a minister. Uh, <laughs> a lot more to discuss uh, with former uh, Minister of Energy, Udega Manpila. We are talking about the current economic uh, crisis, uh, what led to it and also what kind of solutions. I, I would like to get, uh, pick the brain of the former minister as to what he thinks we need to do uh, in, in order to get uh, out of this crisis. Because uh, as much as uh, everybody is saying that we might go under the water, um, that's not an option for anyone. We need to find a solution. We need to find the best solution possible for this country and, and keep moving moving ahead. Um, let's take a short commercial break. You're watching the special report on other than the We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, this is a special report on Sri Lanka's current economic crisis. I'm in conversation with former Minister of Energy, Uday Gamanpila. Um, we've been talking about what happened, what led to this crisis and what kind of er erroneous steps that was taken uh, in order uh, to force us to be here at this particular moment. Um, Foreign Minister, one of the things like I've been saying like in, in previous two, three programs, um, yes, we are talking uh, because there are couple of solutions at hand which we can do but it is not long term but at least in the short term in order to get some kind of a solution in order to make sure that we do not go down the drain uh, there are solutions which we can uh, uh, take uh, bilateral relations seems to be one of the key factors and key uh, denominators in, in in solving this crisis India is a key player when it comes to Sri Lankan politics Sri Lankan economy so is China now, China is missing in this conversation. Um, when you all were fighting to bring back uh, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa back in 2015, um, no, sorry, um, back in uh, 2019, uh, along with the current president, uh, you all were very lenient towards China. You all understood China as, as one of a key contributor to this country, and, and there was a massive good relationship going uh, with, with both the nations. 
uh, China is missing in this conversation. They seem to be uh, a bit silent, not exactly forthcoming. What do you think? Why do you think is that? There are several reasons. As you correctly pointed out, during uh, MR's government, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa's government, China was our strongest ally. As a result, by now, uh, China is the biggest contributor to the Sri Lankan aid. Traditionally, it was until President Rajapaksa's government, it was Japan. But China surpassed Japan and became the biggest donor because of the close relationship mm -hmm. maintained by the Sri Lankan government. Our relationship has uh, is in, in a kind of a trouble at this moment. We must admit that there are several reasons. You know, it is customary that a uh, head of state of Sri Lanka first visit India. Soon thereafter, he or she goes to China. Following the well-established tradition, President Gotabe Rajapaksa visited India within two months of his election. However, for last two and a half years, he failed to visit China despite there is a pending invitation from Chinese president. I think... Wasn't it because of COVID? Yeah, COVID was global. So other leaders visit China. President Rajapaksa visit different countries. US, China, India, uh, UK. So, uh, so then China may be wondering whether, whether COVID is exclusive to China or whether uh, since China was the origin of uh, COVID, uh, Sri Lankans are scared to visit China. So they may have different conclusions because we have not communicated so far why we have decided not to visit. Let me go through the list. That's the first one. Secondly, as you know, they secured uh, this FSRU and gas supply project mm -hmm. to uh, uh, power plants in Sri Lanka through a competitive bidding process. You're talking about the Yugadhanavi plant? Yugadhanavi and the entire thing. Yugadhanavi is the, you know, people know as a Yugadhanavi deal kind of a thing. Okay. Right? So it was secured by a Chinese company going through a competitive bidding process. But the government decided to ignore that competitive bidding process and to offer this to New Fortress Synergy, which is a company which did not participate in this process. Now, nobody will come forward to participate in tender procedure in Sri Lanka because you can always secure the project without going through the tender procedure. Forget about that, but China is ups uh, worried, is upset because they secured it and it was given to their rival, not only uh, their rival, US, U when China was defending Sri Lanka at UNHRC, yeah. U.S. is the one who sponsored the resolutions against Sri Lanka. So, uh, taking out of China and given to uh, U.S.A. Yeah, Thirdly, uh, there were three, uh, three power pr uh, plants to be installed Sample. in three islands in, uh, in of north. northern. So, uh, again, ADB funded project, competitive bidding process was uh, followed. And a Chinese company secured the, uh, all three power plants. In fact, as the minister of, uh, as a, a cabinet spokesperson, I announced the cabinet decision to the nation. Then India got to know, and India came forward to. Uh, India of, uh, made an, made, India did not no Indian company participate in the bidding process. But once they realized that. Uh, Chinese companies secured all three the power plants. They offered a 75% grant and 25% loan to uh, in, uh, install and establish those power plants there. So China is again upset as a result. Fourthly, you know the famous, infamous organic fertilizer ship mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, but yeah. It was a big issue for China since 
That company was the lead, lead of organic fertilizer in the entire world market. You were in the government. Was there any kind of merit where, uh, with regard to what our officials said that the, the Chinese fertilizer was uh, filled with bacteria and it, ha it has some hazardous uh, materials uh, that was coming into the country, which apparently uh, magically disappeared when it went to Singapore. So uh, w what's the story on that? Well, uh, according to the cabinet papers submitted by the Minister of Agriculture, there was, there was no, th if there is an issue, then of course they have agreed to accept a third party lab test. Mm -hmm. So accordingly they have done the test in German and it has also said neg negative. So according to the contract. Was it Germany so or versus Singapore? As far as I could remember it was Germany. But there was a one the, the another, another one being done in yeah. Singapore. So, so many tests being done by the supplier, right? Whatever it is, according to the contract. Mm. Where we were bound to accept the third, you know, we are, if we are in a dispute, we nominate a third party to uh, do the testing. So, uh, so we did not, their allegation was that not only we did not honor the contract and the LC conditions, in addition to that, Sri Lanka filed a case against a company which brought a lot of publicity yeah. in the world media and company got distributed as a result is their main allegation. Fifthly, as you may have heard, uh, Chi Chinese government is, uh, Chi Chinese companies are uh, involved in construction of the Central Expressway. I can't remember the which phase, right? Uh, there were certain issues raised by China about uh, corruption involved in offering subcontracts in, uh, in that phase. I can't remember exactly mm -hmm. what that phase was. So because of these five reasons, uh, Sri Lanka China relationship is not at its best. Is it but salvage? China is the country which can help Sri Lanka Th the most at this time. That is what my argument has always now, been. Let me explain with the fact. Now, if we can have ten billion dollars, right, we would be quite comfortable to pass this year. It's a matter of ten billion dollars. China is having. 3,400 billion dollars in their foreign currency reserves. Now, Sri Lanka is having little more than uh, 1 billion. billion. Uh, yes. Right? So, uh, with SWAP and all that, we may claim that we have little more than 2 billion, but in reality, even less than 1 billion dollars. But China is in possession of 3,400 billion dollars as their foreign currency reserve. Mm. So but, but China country has the capacity to yeah. help us. That's what I'm saying. So why do you, this is what I need to know. When every single time, even when uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksa's China, even President Gotabe Rajapaksa's China, we saw a lot of Chinese officials coming into the country. They were talking to the president, the foreign minister was here. There was uh, uh, a good dialogue going on uh, and uh, nothing. After that, when this crisis hits, there is nothing. Why do you think we are not speaking to China? Because the initiator should be us, because we are the ones who are in trouble. Uh, China is not in trouble, but we are the ones who, in, who is in trouble. So why do you see that we are going to the IMF? We are going to uh, India. We are going to the rest of the world, but we're not going to China. Why, but why who has money? Exactly, the one who has money in the whole world for that matter. So, uh, Mahesh, not that uh, government has, I'm not, the, I can't speak on behalf of the government yes. now, but, but since but, but you I was have expelled the recently, <laughs> yes, I have a recent experience with the government. So, it's not true that government has not touched China. Recently, a central bank was able to secure $1.5 billion SWEP facility. So that can, this, the, although it's uh, 1.5 billion dollars worth yuan, it's in f Chinese currency, so we can use those currencies to pay, make the payment for Chinese imports. And Sri Lanka has, now as you know, uh, Sri Lankan government signed a uh, 1 billion dollar worth credit facility with India. Sri Lankan government has sought one $2.5 billion worth credit facility from a uh, Chinese government. As far as my knowledge, China is working on it. So we can place some hope, hope there. So it's not 
true that Sri Lanka is not working with China, but uh, because of the reasons I explained, mm. China is not happy with the present Sri Lankan government. As a result, they don't come out of the way to help Sri Lanka. That, uh, that's very evident right now. Um, Minister, before we go in for a, a break, I want uh, to get a small take on, on it prior to the break, and, and then we'll discuss afterwards. But um, yes, there is no point in talking about uh, the, 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 the enormity of the problem, the enormity of, of the, this big hole we are in, because we are already in it. Now, what we need to talk about is how to get out of it. What uh, you all have put around 10, uh, 10 uh, facts to say these, these needs to be done uh, in order to make sure that Sri Lanka can at least survive. Um, I think a couple of those I have already, been, I think three of those have already been, uh, uh, I mean, the government has adhered to those things and they're doing it, which is the floating of the rupee, uh, going to the IMF, uh, and also, uh, I think, um, uh, stopping imports. Restriction, uh, restriction of non-essential imports, then uh, the government has taken measures to uh, reduce the consumption of the petroleum products, then there is a campaign to reduce, uh, save in power, energy in power sector. Yeah. So th they have taken a lot of steps so as we uh, <coughs> recommended. But Mahesh, the problem is they were very late. In fact, they are too late now. Because, you know, we may prescribe certain medicine for a patient. But so after but, but, but after but one minister, year, now he's in ICU. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I we, can, we can't expect the yeah, desired but, but result. As, 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 uh, as, uh, individual, forget about ministerial post, forget about everything, as a citizen of Sri Lanka who was so dedicated in bringing this government to power, who, who, who started, who, who, you know, made the first uh, uh, switch in order to take president, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa, now the current President Gotabi Rajapaksa, into power. You all can't just say, you specifically, too late, can't do anything <laughs> this way. But I'm sure you, ha you would have been thinking about certain solutions that we need to, at least at this last moment, we need to take. Because <coughs> there is no other option, Minister. We cannot say, you know, we are too late, we are done, and Sri Lanka needs to, you know, go down the train. Because that is not something we can accept. As a politician, what do you think yeah. we need to do right now in order to get out of this? Look, uh, we are not just saying, uh, let me correct you, Mahesh. We are not just saying we are now too late. We, that's why we recommended the things to be done to the government on time. Y you just uh, refer to the 10-point proposal mm. submitted by us. But that it was something happened in two weeks ago, on 2nd of March. But more, as I explained before, more than a year ago, I have been, we have been pressing the government to uh, take certain steps. But unfortunately, gov since government was of the view that there is no such a crisis, they didn't want to do so. Now, things we could do are very, uh, very little at this moment since, as I explained, too, little, uh, too late. Now, but still, as you said, this is our country. We have to save this. So in this, now we have... Uh, deepen the crisis by just sitting on it. Now let's see what we could do. Firstly, try to take long-term credit for our imports from whatever our source country. Now, most of our imports are coming from India and China. So not like other countries, you know, in most, if you take EU, UK, USA for instance, we have favorable trade balances mm -hmm. with those countries. If I explain in uh, common uh, man's terms, our exports, export income from those countries are higher than our import expenditure mm -hmm. to those countries. But with India and China, we have a huge trade gap, meaning our exports are very little compared to huge amount of imports we purchase from those countries. So, showing this we should negotiate with those countries accept more and more from sri lankan products and also to push those countries to give us enhanced credit facilities with 
uh, with a repayment period of one year, at least one year, to supply commodities to us. Now, China, India is giving one billion dollars. We should push further because they have earned a lot out of us. That is the case with China as well. China is the biggest importer. So they have made a lot of profit out of us. They have earned, I said, they are having $3,400 billion of reserves. We have heavily contributed towards that. Then the Middle East. Uh, we have spent you know, around 20 to 25% of our import bill is for petroleum products. So th those uh, our hard-earned foreign cur currencies have ended up in Middle East or Singapore. So we should talk to those countries and get credit lines. In fact, we initiated those. The government should take further uh, and finalize those agreements without that's a f that's a second step that we have to take. Thirdly, until such time, if no, you know, do we, there are a lot of if. So if unless these countries uh, agree to provide such credit facilities, we can't do anything because those are beyond our control. Mm. Then what should we do? So short term, we should try to build, uh, pro uh, produce what, as what much as required? possible, yeah. grow as much as possible. We have to go for short term. You know, import I, I substitution I is yeah. not a good strategy. Exactly. Or quality would go down. But at this moment, we have no choice but to go for import substitution. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. I'm in conversation with former uh, Energy Minister with Gamban Pillar with regard to the current economic situation here in Sri Lanka. He's been explaining exactly what has been going within the government. And here we are right now with this crisis and uh, also give his take on what kind of solutions we can take in order to come out of it. You're watching this special report on Adhira 24. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is a special report on Sri Lanka's current economic crisis. I'm in conversation with former Energy Minister Uday Gamban Pillar. Uh, Minister, we've been talking about solutions uh, oh, next two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months, three months down the line. Um, people are going to uh, feel the hardships a little bit more and uh, we would be seeing a little uh, uh, some kind of steps being taken and like you said those solutions might take some time in order to materialize uh, right now what i saw um, was that everything you up you proposed in that 10 uh, point plan uh, the government is starting to implement why did you have to leave the government in order to get that implemented uh, was it was it that hard because we have we clearly see there is a, a, a fracture within the government party. There is no unity. There is this uh, the faction politics is uh, is taking place once again. But shouldn't we now come together? Uh, because what I need to like what I like to know is what is your alternative solution if this government is not the government? Is it the opposition? Do you think the opposition has the solution in order to get get us through this crisis? Firstly, let me correct you. We did not leave, leave the, government, the government. Yes, right? you are still we in the government. No, no, we were expelled from the government. Yes, but still, we are sitting in the government side in parliament. So we were expelled by the president. So uh, rather than posing the question to us that why did you leave the government, you should ask from the president that why did you expel these ministers? Yes, right. As I explained to you before, we were fighting within to convince the government that we are in a crisis and we must take these steps to avoid a, uh, a deep crisis. Unfortunately, instead of listening to us, they decided to get rid of us, then that problem is over. But fortunately, I'm glad to note that they have decided to implement what we propose this even after our expulsion that's something we admire so uh, as i explained if, uh, last time for the, your last yes. question 
I explain in brief what are the steps to be taken by Sri Lanka to come out of this crisis. Unfortunately, now see, we being a part, part of the government, we, by the time we uh, submitted our proposals, we were part of the government, but since government failed to uh, publish a proposal to, or a recovery plan, uh, failed to publish a recovery plan, not only the government, the, so when government failed to uh, come out with a recovery plan, we, coalition partners, decide to deliberate and mm. formulate a solution, formulate a recovery plan. But look at the Look at the opposition, main opposition. They criticize the government. You know, we can say queues should have been av averted, suffering should have been avoided. So that can we don't need an opposition to say those things. Just shout in slogans. You can't solve this problem by the distributing candles. Uh, is not a solution for the power cut. The then they should come out with a solution. But so far. Neither JVP nor the SJB have come out of solutions. I must admire my arch rival, uh, Champika Ranavaka. In his <laughs> own way, he's, he's an isolated person. He doesn't have a big movement. He's a just solitary member of uh, his movement, uh, solitary parliamentarian of his movement. But still, yeah, with his uh, capacity, he has come out with a solution. It, it may be acceptable or not acceptable. It's a different matter. But at least he was uh, able to come out with some solution. But unfortunately, and we expect our opposition to do the same. Right? If somebody demand a president to uh, leave the government and elect them to or hand over the government to them, first of all, they should explain the nation what is the solution they possess that they are going to implement after coming to the power. So they can't have a magic and keep it in secret until uh, taking over the government. Then I, I, do, I, I expect opposition to do that. But government is, as, you, as, as, you have, as all, we, all of us have witnessed, government of popu popularity has come drastically down. As a result, now government is not in a position to convince now as the government should be able to lead the entire nation out of this crisis. In order to do that, government should be able to win the confidence of the people. Th that's something government is lacking. Government has no capacity to win the people's confidence since isn't they that have the lied people. No, isn't that remember, a temporary let, thing? Not at all. But temporary means we are in the crisis at this moment. So, in order to take the nation out of the crisis, government should win the people's confidence. Now, see, on 30th, on 24th of January, Finance Minister announced that within a week we will get fuel from a diesel from IOC, LIOC, and stop uh, power cuts. It was a lie. On thereafter, he said, there will be no power cuts from 5th of March. We are experiencing the power cuts even today. And now they don't give any deadlines. But when they keep lying, when they do not tell the bitter truth to the people, they can't win the confidence of the people. Winning public confidence is key to the salvation, key to the come out of this crisis. Um. The only thing I can say, and I, and I hope, is that, uh, Foreign Minister, that uh, you all will still continue to keep fighting within the government because, like you said, there is no alternative uh, to go to or to seek to. But let's, uh, let's hope for the best. That's all what we can do right now and, and make sure that uh, we all work together in order to get out of this crisis. Former Minister Uday Gamanpil, thank you very much uh, sir, for once again being here. Despite the fact that whether you're in the government or not, here you are. <laughs> uh, um, you know, happy to talk to me. I really appreciate that. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Always remember to stay positive and test negative. The news continues right here on Other Than 24.